This is a 501st Clone Trooper helmet from Star Wars. And this is a bearded dragon. But what do they have in common? do they have in common? Well, firstly, I own both of them. And secondly, the helmet is about to be modified to give me the superpowers of a bearded dragon. Bearded dragons have superpowers? Well, yeah, they actually do. On the back of a bearded dragon's head is a small organ that's photosensitive. That means it can sense light. It's like a third eye. This is useful to them because they can detect when predators like birds fly overhead so it keeps them safe. Now, some clone trooper helmets have a rangefinder, that is an arm on the side, that gives distance and size readings that helps them to see. Well, I mean, it doesn't help them because they're fictional. That's besides the point. They're real to me. Anyway, it helps them see the distance of objects in front of them. But I thought, why not combine that with the bearded dragon and make it something that can see the range behind? Let's start the making process. So this is probably the easiest, simplest way to replicate a bearded dragon's third eye. It's just a potential divider with a 5 kilo ohm resistor, an, an LDR, and a 330 microfarad capacitor across the LDR, and then an LED connected also across the LDR. So what happens when I increase the light levels, so I'll turn my light on, the LED dips down and goes off, so but when I move my shadow across it goes up. So this essentially replicates the third eye because now I can detect changes in light level by looking at the LED. To minimise the size of this project I'm trying to move away from using this Arduino instead using NPN transistors like this one here. So this is similar to the last setup except for the fact I use the transistor as a switch to control the LED. So when I put my hand over the uh, LDR, the LED comes on, move it away, goes off. Looking at the previous design, you probably thought that putting the LED next to the LDR was a bad idea, seeing as the LDR is dependent on the amount of light that's hitting it and the LED is putting out light. So I've replaced it with a speaker. I said earlier that I wasn't going to use Arduino. But I lied. This sucks. I need to make something better. So I've just finished working on the sensor that will go on the back of my head. So let's take a look. Using an LDR to sense the light levels behind you is actually a really bad idea. Because light levels change. The conditions change as you walk along all the time. So it might be sunny one minute, not sunny the next, and you don't want your earpiece going off at you just because, you know, a cloud went past. You only want it going off at you when someone's about to whack you on the head from behind. So I've switched to the ultrasonic sensor and I'm starting to work on a display to display the distance behind so someone is. But um, this is a quick test to show you how the earpiece produces a sound proportional to the distance of an object behind. And I'm going to use this handy B17 box, which is a um, remote control airplane that I bought a while ago. Anyway, so. When it's over a meter away, I mean, this is off camera, the speaker produces no noise. But as I get closer, so you can see that the frequency of sound produced by the speaker is directly proportional to the distance that the ultrasonic sensor is away from an object. So I'm just about to plug the wires into this LCD screen so they'll light up and so I can display the distance that the ultrasonic sensor is away from the object behind me. Oh my god, shut up! Die. There we go.
That seems to be working pretty well. So this is the next version of the sensor setup. So now you notice it's giving a distance and a speed reading. So when I move my hand closer, it should read a high positive speed, and as I move it away, it reads a negative speed, which makes sense. I've added a potentiometer here to control the contrast of the screen. So I can make it darker or brighter. I've also just added a red LED here to act as an indicator for when the velocity is too high. See when it reads two meters per second here, uh, the red LED comes on. It should be noted that the speed reading here is not the true speed. It's more a representation of what the speed is. So a bigger number here indicates that the object is moving faster relative to the ultrasonic sensor. This is mainly because it's too hard for me to tune it accurately and I can't really be bothered. Slow down. Let's step back to the beginning of this video. This is a 501st Clone Trooper helmet from Star Wars, and I think it'll be perfect for putting the electronics inside. So this is a modification I made to the helmet. Um, I'm going to put the LCD display on the end of this arm. And it's going to kind of, it can go up and down, so I can have it up here, so sort of like resting against there, so I don't have to look at it. But then I can ping it down easily and have a look at what the distance and velocity are reading. This is made out of Meccano, so it's a kid's helmet uh, with kid's toys stuck on the side to make technology. I've just finished the wiring of all the components other than the Arduino and the power supply. So here's the ultrasonic sensor and inside there's a mess of wires but you can see warning light LEDs and the buzzer there. I've just finished making this and I think, well, what do you think? I think it looks pretty good. Let's try it on. Sexy, right? That's awesome. So it's really hard to show you how this helmet works. So I'm going to put a camera inside the helmet to show you the electronics operating, how you would see them if you had it on your head. That should be set up properly now. Yeah, this recording doesn't really capture what it's like to wear the helmet at all. It's a lot better than this. That's how it all works. That concludes this video. And I have to say, this is the one I enjoy making the most out of all of the videos I've done. So if you want to see more stuff like this, subscribe. Mm -hmm.